Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, this past Monday, I just want to share something with you. Uh, this past Monday, uh, two days ago, I was actually setting up a computer that I, me and my wife just got. And so when I had finished setting up my computer, I began to check, amen, if everything was working properly like anybody would do. I began to check the mouse. I began to check the keyboard, uh, amen, uh, the internet, amen. But as I began to look, amen, on YouTube and click a video, amen, uh, to check the sound, I heard no sound. And just stick with me for a little bit. I heard no sound. I'm calm at this point. So I'm like, okay. I'm thinking I'm just uh, misplugged something or I placed something in the wrong area. So I began to check, amen, if I did something wrong. And so as I'm checking, everything was in the right place. And so I'm checking, uh, everything's in the right place, nothing's wrong. And so I'm thinking maybe there's something on the volume control, the sound on my computer that I need to just fix or click on. So I begin to check on the computer and uh, everything was right. And so at this point, I'm starting to get frustrated. I mean, you know, computers flush, frustrate you. When, when you just can't get something done on the computer, it frustrates you. So um, I'm at this point, I'm starting to get frustrated. Amen. I'm thinking, what's a computer without sound? I don't know if you ever had a computer without sound, but I think that's pointless. So I'm thinking, what's a computer without sound? So I'm searching online, amen. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what's the problem. It's about 10 p.m. right now. Uh, I can't figure out the problem. I'm trying different things, telling myself I'm not going to go to sleep until I fix it. My wife comes, tells me, hey, it's time to go to sleep. No, go to sleep. You go to sleep. I'm doing something. Amen. At this point, I'm frustrated to the max. Uh, I, I'm really just frustrated. It's, it's about 2 p.m. I can't fix it. I have no sound on my computer. Five hours went to waste. And so I decided, you know, I'll get you tomorrow. <laughs> I try it again tomorrow. So um, as I'm going to sleep, amen, uh, I heard God tell me this. I didn't know it was going to be some kind of revelation, but I'm just trying to fix my sound. But as I'm going to sleep, I heard God tell me this. Just as you think your computer without sound is pointless, he says, I say this, the world... People without my voice, it's pointless. If you read Ecclesiastes chapter 2, the Bible says everything without God is pointless. The Bible says for the wise and the foolish both dies. Talking about the smartest people, the people that don't listen, listen to God that they both will be forgotten. You know, many people operate in life. Amen. They operate good in life without God. You know, people operating, operate good without God in life. You see people. I see people. They're good. They got money. They got a nice car. They got a nice house. They have, they, they're operating good. They don't need God. They don't need his voice. The thing is, they never find the will of God for their life. They can operate. They never hear the sound of God. They can operate good, but they never find the will of God for their life. There's no spiritual guidance in their life. There's no gaining spiritual wisdom. There's no gaining spiritual understanding, discernment. Their life 
It's pointless because they cannot benefit the kingdom of God. Bible says we were born to do one thing, and that's to glorify God. That's to benefit the kingdom of God. How I many know we need sound? Man. We need the voice of God in our life in order to find the will of God for our life. We need the voice of God in our life in order to be guided. In order to gain an understanding, amen, uh, in order to gain wisdom, uh, in order, amen, uh, amen, to make right choices in life. How I many know oh, we need the voice of God? <laughs> to benefit the kingdom of God. You know, this evening I'm going to preach about a man named Paul. You know Paul's story. He once lived without the voice of God when his name was Saul. But then he heard the voice of God. And when he heard the voice of God, I mean, everything changed. His life changed. Direction began to come in his life. Discernment, wisdom, understanding, all that began to come into his life when he heard the voice of God. The voice of Jesus Christ. I want to read with you in Acts. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to Acts chapter 9, verse 3 to 6. Amen. Verse 3 to 6, chapter 9. Amen. The Bible tells us, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly a light sprung around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and he heard a voice. He heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul. Why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? You know, I was telling one of my, one of the guys who, uh, 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 and I'm going to stop real quick. I was telling one of the guys, he tried to stop me there when I was trying to tell him what I'm going to preach on. He told me, but you remember Paul say, Who are you, Lord? I said, Paul knew it was a God, but he didn't know it was Jesus. So that the Bible says, and this is how we know, the Bible says, then the then the Lord said to him, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. He said, it is hard for you to kick against the groves. So, so he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, arise and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for the voice uh, of Jesus Christ uh, that God uh, guides us uh, and holds us accountable, that gives us wisdom and knowledge and the will, uh, oh God, uh, of yours for our life. Uh, we pray this day you speak to us through your spirit. Uh, you help us, uh, God, uh, oh God, be sensitive to, to your voice. You give us an ear for your voice uh, that we may know the will of God uh, for our life. Uh, and in Jesus name I pray amen I want to title this sermon uh, knowing Jesus's voice not knowing God's voice because there's many gods in this world I want to entitle this knowing Jesus's voice in our text this evening if you don't know who Saul was I'm just gonna simply just give you a little background Saul was a Jewish man and amen he studied the Hebrew scripture he studied the Bible the law of Moses were famous teachers, which were the Pharisees. Uh, amen. Saul was a religious man, just like the Pharisees. Amen. They knew, amen, uh, the word of God. They knew scripture back through the front. They knew it all. But the thing, uh, they did not know Jesus' voice. In the Bible, it tells us, Saul will go to homes. He will go to Christians' homes, amen, and that he will murder them. And that, amen, he will persecute him. And you got to understand, this is a man who knew Scripture. He murdered Christians. He knew Scripture, though. But because of their teaching, amen, he murdered them because of their teaching of telling uh, the Jews and the, amen, the Pharisees 
People, amen, like Stephen, he would tell them, hey, Jesus is the only way to salvation. And so this is why Paul and them got mad because uh, they believed, amen, uh, that their own righteous will get them to heaven. They didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. They didn't believe that the Holy Spirit is what they needed. Uh, so, amen, they got mad at these people and they persecuted him. But this is a man who knew the word of God. Listen. I want you to know, God, amen, I want you to know, Saul thought he was in the will of God, just like many people in this world. He thought he was benefiting the kingdom of God by killing Christians. But listen, he wasn't. Why? Because he did not know the voice of Jesus Christ. Bible says, when he fell to the ground and heard the voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He said, who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus. Knowing the voice of Jesus. You know, one of the big things I struggled with. And uh, I believe many people struggle with this. It is knowing Jesus' voice. You know, I ask myself times when I was a new convert. This is when I... When I was a new comet, I struggled with this. I would ask myself, time to time, how do I know when it's God speaking to me? How do I know it's Jesus' voice? You know, a lot of people struggle with that. How do I know when it's Jesus speaking to me? I would always struggle with that. There's times when I'm alone. You know, we can hear God speak to us in service because, you know, you're preaching the gospel of Jesus. The Spirit is here. But when you're alone, I'll struggle. How do I know when it's Jesus speaking to me, telling me what to do? Telling me when to step out in faith. Tell me. Now we're always struggling. Tell myself, well, I think it's God. Well, I don't know if it's God. Maybe it is God. Maybe it's not. What if it is? What if it's not? something I struggled with. A lot of people struggle with that. And I want you to know, honestly, it bothered me. And I'm pretty sure it bothers a lot of people. You know, I knew without knowing God's voice, it would hinder my walk. Just like it did with Saul. You know why Saul, amen, his beginning of his life was hindered. He was lost. He was confused because he did not know the voice of God. Many people, amen, they walk. They walk. They know scripture. They hear it, but they don't know the voice of God. So I'm going to preach on that this evening. And I'm going to help you out, amen, if you struggle with that. In the Bible of John, chapter 10, verse 25, 27, Jesus spoke and he said, I told you, in verse 25, he said, I told you. And you do not believe. The work that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe, because you are not of my sheep. As I say to you, he says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, uh, and they follow me. Another translation says, uh, my sheep uh, know my voice. If you're here, amen, and you struggled uh, with knowing the voice of Jesus Christ, uh, but you have a desire to find the will of God for, amen, your life. You have a desire to grow in wisdom. You have a desire to grow in understanding. Your desires to benefit the kingdom of God. Your desires to change. But you struggle with knowing, amen, the voice of God. I want to encourage you, amen, and believe with you, amen, that scripture this evening is going to help you. Amen. The first thing, amen, I want you to know. Scripture tells us, as Jesus says, my sheep will know my voice. In other words, you have to be a sheep for you to know the voice of Jesus Christ. You know, the reason why Saul did not know Jesus' voice is because he was not a sheep. Amen. He thought he was a sheep, but he wasn't. He didn't believe that Jesus was the only way to salvation. He didn't repent. He didn't ask God for forgiveness. 
Verse 26, Jesus says, but you did not believe because you are not my sheep. Saul did not believe when Stephen and men of the Holy Spirit came to him and told him, hey man, uh, you need to repent. Hey man, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is life. Uh, hey man, you need to repent. You need to ask God for forgiveness so he can show you, so he can teach you. Saul didn't want to believe that. Saul lived a life believing a different doctrine. And not Jesus is Christ doctrine. If you want it, if you want to know the voice of Jesus, first thing is you have to believe. You have to believe Jesus is the gate to heaven. You have to believe that Jesus is the only way to salvation. You have to believe that you are a sinner and that Jesus is the only one that can forgive you. Jesus says in verse chapter 10, 9, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. You have to repent of your sins. You have to know how to live a life of a humanity, amen. You have to know how to live a life of humbleness. You have to learn how to come to the altar and say, God, I'm a sinner. I repent and ask God for forgiveness. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. You know, the world and people, they say, well, God spoke to me. God did this. God. But they're, they're, not, they're, they're, not, they're not the sheep. They're not a sheep. They're still living in sin. They don't believe. You can't hear God's voice without being a sheep. The second thing is being filled with the Holy Spirit. This is what I really want to touch on. Is being filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Enable you to hear God's voice. You know, at the end of Jesus' earthly ministry, as he's preparing to die on the cross, he told his disciples. He said, but the help of the Holy Spirit who the Father was sent in my name he will teach you in all things and bring to you remembrance of all things that I say to you. You know, there's people that don't believe in the Holy Ghost. You know, they go to church. Regular people that go to church, they give. But there's some people that just don't believe in the Holy Ghost. You know, one of my friends, they, they, they don't, they, they go, but they don't believe in the Holy Ghost. They say, well, well, the Holy Ghost might be for you, but it's not for me. I want you to know this evening that the Bible says the Holy Ghost is our helper. And that it teaches us and it allows us to hear God's voice, the voice of Jesus. You know, you look at Saul. As I said, he had the word of God. He knew the word of God. Listen, but because he denied the Holy Ghost... His life was misled. You know, these words came from this man before his conversion. Well, after his conversion, Paul said these words. He says, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. He's talking about the Bible. He's talking about his old life. He said, hey, I, I knew the gospel. I knew the letter of Jesus Christ. But... Because I had no spirit, it killed me. He said, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. This is him showing his testimony. You know, we can know the word of God, church. We can know. We can know it front to back. But without the Holy Spirit inside of us, inside of us without accepting this spirit, the Bible says they were dead. You know, during sermons and you know what people don't understand sometimes when the pastors preach? This was a testimony of mine too. You know why people don't understand sometimes? They don't hear God's voice through the sermons because they have no spirit. They're not filled with the Holy Spirit.
Listen to what this says in 1 Corinthians 2, 14. Paul says, the man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God. For they are foolish to him, and he cannot understand them, because they are spiritually discerned. Without the Holy Spirit, we are unable to hear the voice of God, because, listen, God is of the Spirit. And that, amen, Romans, amen, 8, chapter verse Chapter 8, verse 16, Paul, once again, he says, The Spirit itself is breathed witness, uh, is bared witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Listen, we hear the voice of the Spirit of God uh, in the Spirit. In order to have contact with God, in order to know God's voice, in order to operate with God, uh, we have to be born of the Spirit. You cannot find life. You cannot find the will of God. You cannot be guided. You cannot find wisdom. You cannot find understanding. Without the Holy Spirit. It is through the Spirit uh, that we are guided. It is through the Spirit uh, that we are taught. It is through the Spirit we find God's will for our life. John chapter 16, verse 13 to 14 says, When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth, for He would not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for He will take what is mine and declare it to you. Listen, church, without the Spirit, uh, the Bible, how I many you know it's just ink on paper? Listen, the more we give ourselves to the Spirit, the more we give, amen, the Spirit of God a, a place of honor in our life, the more we become sensitive to the voice of God. The more, amen, uh, amen, amen, there is fellowship and communion uh, with the Holy Spirit and God. The more we are sharpened, the more we become more sensitive, the more we are, amen, able to hear the voice of God when he speaks. Thirdly, I want to talk about hearing God's voice in obedience. Amen. If you read the first Kings, the Bible, amen, in chapter 19, verse 11 to 12, amen, the Bible says, uh, when the word of the Lord came to Elijah, here's Elijah, amen, the word of the Lord came to Elijah and told him to stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. God was in the powerful, God was not in the powerful when that tore mountains apart and shattered rocks. Nor was he in the earthquake. God wasn't in the father fire either. After the fire, Elijah heard God's still small voice. Uh, it was in the moment, amen, of obedience, uh, amen, uh, uh, amen, to the Lord uh, that Elijah was able to hear God's voice. I mean, oh, when we don't obey, when we, amen, uh, want to do our own thing, when we want to, amen, live our own life, uh, amen, the Bible, how many know, it says in Isaiah chapter 59, uh, verse 2, that we become separated. We become separated from God. It says, but your iniquities have separated you, your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. Listen, the more we obey, the more, the more we begin to Listen to God's word. The more, amen, our personal connection with God, it grows. We grow stronger. We go deeper in knowing his voice. His voice becomes more clear. This is why, amen, we can stand in front of somebody and say, hey, amen, Jesus dies for you. Jesus wants to give you life. They're like, and so... They're far away from God because of their sin. They can't hear God's voice. They don't know what God really wants to do for them. Hey man, Jesus has a future for you. I got a future for myself. They, they can't hear the voice of Jesus Christ. They can't, they can't, they can't. There's no connection. Because there's no obedience. Fourth thing is when you know the voice of the G voice of Jesus Christ, 
your life changes. This is why we need to know the voice of Jesus Christ. I believe people struggle with this. I believe the reason why it's hard for people to walk with God is because they don't know the voice of Jesus. The reason why it's hard for their people's life to change when they get saved because they don't know the voice of Jesus Christ. You know, we see in our text, the Bible says when Saul, when he fell to the ground, he heard a voice. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. When he heard Jesus' voice, when he heard the name of Jesus, because he was hearing it, People were telling them about Jesus. When he heard the voice of Jesus, he was astonished. The Bible says, in another word, that, that means he was amazed. He was tripped out. And immediately he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? When, we, when Saul finally heard the voice of Jesus, and knew it was Jesus. How I many know we can say that Saul found the will of God for his life? You know, how I many know after that moment that Saul heard the voice of Jesus, how I many know his life changed? Come on. Think about it. He said, Lord, what do you want me to do? After this moment, amen, Saul encountered the voice of Jesus. Not only his life changed, but his name changed. God said, I'm going to call you Paul, the Apostle Paul. Not only his name changed, but his lifestyle changed. He didn't kill Christians no more. He wasn't out to amen work in righteousness no more. He was living by the grace of God. He was living in mercy. He was now, amen, able to walk in obedience. He became the greatest missionary of all times in the Bible from this one moment of knowing the voice of Jesus Christ. The voice of Jesus Christ will change your life. When you hear God speak to you, when you hear Jesus speak to you, it can change your life. Listen, if you're here and you want to, you want, you, you want to find the will of God for your life. Listen, not everybody's called to be a pastor. Not everybody's called to be a pastor wife. We all have different callings. But if you want to find the will of God for your life, you want to find guidance for your life. You want to gain spiritual wisdom for your life. You want to be set free. You want your life to change. You want to grow in discernment. You want to become something great. You want to benefit the kingdom of heaven. You need to know the voice of Jesus Christ. You need to know Jesus' voice. When he speaks to you. Man, I want every head bowed. This. This.